My, what a big stick you have. Ways a tug. The joys about life. More glamour. Oh. Time to be back in the wetsuit then. <laughs> Unleash your nails. <laughs> right. ready to go off which means that um, we've got to service um, our engine again but um, as with all projects you've got to play the boat game which is you've got to move things out so that you can get to in our case our diesel filter um, but on to the moment we've got our dinghy right on top of where that should be so in other words we have to move the dinghy first Basically, yes, the dinghy has got to come out of hibernation um, and uh, go up on deck and uh, be inflated. But that puts the boat game one notch further back because to get the dinghy out... We've got to get rid of all the other stuff that's in front of the dinghy so that we can get it out. Like I say, it's this is the boat game, which is that little tile game where you move things around. <laughs> sausage has been in the back berth um, hibernating for the last three months and she seems to have um, some kind of growth on her so to add to our little list of jobs before we go we'll have to give her a good clean um, but uh, for now we're going to just slip her, flip her over and um, so that we can get into that back berth Okay, things have changed and here's the way it is. The local government here in Northern Ireland has decided that from the 1st of April we can sail a bit. And what that means is that we can go out through the marina entrance, bob around out there for a bit, but we must come back to this marina. We can't go to a different marina, we can't leave the area. So it's local sailing. Now, that means it's time to do a job we've been putting off for a while, which is getting the engine serviced. We just haven't had time to do it because we've been doing other things. And if you've watched the channel, you've seen all the sorts of things we've been up to. Um, so job number one today is to have a look under the boat and see what state the sail draft leg is in. I mean, I'm expecting it to be there, but is it covered in weed or anything like that? Uh, what state's the prop in? Is there anything stuck to it? Does it need a good clean with a brush? Uh, what's the keel look like? Um, so what I've done, is I've got a wooden stick and I put one of our camera clamps on and in case this uh, looks a bit big, it's because it is a bit big, the, um, <laughs> there's been a bit of damage on this clamp already I'm afraid, so this is, a this is a stainless steel bolt that's replacing the clamp thing. And I'm going to be putting our tough camera under this clamp and putting it under the boat to inspect the bottom of the boat. Uh, this is a waterproof saltwater camera and it does what it does. If it ever comes loose and things like that, it's got a float on, it'll come back up to the surface. So I'm not too worried about the camera. And then what I'll be doing is I'll be inspecting the footage I've got and just seeing what cleaning I need to do in the bottom of the boat and where I need to do the cleaning. Uh, I don't want to start the engine if the sail drag leg is covered in weed or barnacles or something like that. I'm going to have to find a way to clean it first. But uh, we've got good thick coat of Trilox on there, so it could well be that the sail drag leg will be quite clear. I don't know. I need to look and this is the easiest way to do it. Yeah, 
It is 18 months since our last lifts and clean and Salty Lass had a coat of weed a few millimetres thick. You can see a through hole here and the weed barely covers it. Nonetheless, it was time to get cleaning. And the sail drive leg also needed a good clean. Well, it's not the nicest of days, but um, boat work still continues with poor Beverly cleaning the hull. So what we've decided to do is clean the sail drive leg first before we start the engine because if the, if the holes are all clogged the engine isn't going to cool properly. So we'll do that and that then brings us to the next bit of how do you clean a sail drive leg that's down there when you're not going to haul the boat out. So we've got a number of methods we're going to try. Uh, we've stuck the camera underneath and had a look and after a year and a quarter we've got about half a centimetre to a centimetre of growth on the bottom. It's not a huge amount, it's like a big big coat of slime to be honest. It's little sea squirts and other strange things. So we're going to try a number of methods of getting it off. We have got, and we didn't buy it from Tesco's, it's just in that bag. Um, we have some hessian sacking, which we keep in the bag because the dust goes everywhere if you don't. We've got what I think is astroturf or, or artificial grass in some way. And we have the good old scraper. And the first method we're going to do is to take a line, and I'm not going to use the main halyard, but it just happens to be beside me. Uh, we're going to take a big heavy mooring line. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie a figure of eight knots every like 20 centimetres or something in it. Like that. And carry on repeating that all the way down the line. And the idea is we hang it under the boat and we basically rub the hull and the knots clean the sea squirts off while we jiggy back and forward. Um, so we're going to try that and see how it goes. It's, it's a method many people have told us works. We'll try it out and see. Um, we can also try attaching the corners of this with some lines so that it also <laughs> sits against the hull nice and flat and we can rub it back and forward and see if that takes off these squirts. But I ain't going to put my money on this because Hessian sack has got little holes in, it can spread out over a wide area and it has the nastiest feel to it as far as I'm concerned. I quite like the feel of the grass compared to the Hessian sack. Um, these are great for doing the waterline and you can obviously get, if you've got a wetsuit you can get down under the boat to a certain extent. I also have a nice stiff brush on a long pole that I can reach the sail drive leg with. So the idea is you reach down under the water, the sail drive leg is like that and the brush runs up and down at where the intake holes are. To do that side of the boat I have to put the dinghy in the water. But, you know, you do what you can. So we're going to give it a go and see how it all works out. Now before anybody asks why don't you do the obvious and hop into your beautiful bikini and nip underneath and swim with big flippers like a mermaid and scrape the hull underneath. This is in the Bahamas and it's not the Med. The water here isn't 25 Celsius. The water here is about 5 Celsius. If I jump over the boat to go in there I'll get cold shock and you'll never see me again. So it's remote methods of cleaning. I'm afraid there is going to be no jumping in. Not even with a wetsuit. I'm just not doing it. End of. However, if there's any volunteers who want to jump in and scrape our bottom, Number, the number's underneath. <laughs> trying the um, rope with the figure of eights um, in place and that's clearly working by the amount of um, gunk that's coming off. Uh, but one thing I would say is do make sure that if you've got any um, loggers 
make sure that you've uh, brought those up first. <laughs> so then, we've hit a minor problem. Well, it's clearly working, but you've got two issues. First of all, the keel. <laughs> that's, stopping, uh, that's stopping us going any further back. But look at the side of poor Salty Lass. <laughs> I mean, say I've got all that gunk off the bottom, but now it looks like I've got it all on the side. So uh, the upshot is the um, dish soap and big long brushes coming out next. Absolutely. Um, but also we've got to think of um, how we can clean where the, the keel is. Because I think you can only do that with um, a big long brush bed. And probably from the dinghy. Yeah, because it's the only way. So how do you think the rope uh, method went? Um, partial success. Um, it certainly does get stuff off. There's no two ways about that. The problem is that no matter how much you move the ropes around and how many nuts you put in it, whatever angles you address, you won't get it all. There's still large, looking at in the camera, there's still large sections of hull where there are clearly corridors that have been cleared and corridors that haven't. So we're going to try using the Hessian, which is much broader, and see how that fares. Oh, and the downside, it transfers the muck from under the boat to the side of the boat, so you have to clean your boat afterwards. sacking um, has gone uh, really well actually it's um, it's done it a much broader um, than the rope with the knots uh, and it's removed an awful lot of the um, stuff that we have underneath it now we haven't tried the grass because I'm afraid to say uh, Ellie uh, took one look at it and has commandeered it for her outside uh, amusement. So um, compared to the rope, how did the Hessian do? Um, I thought it did really well, the Hessian. Um, it's removed an awful lot of the stuff. Obviously, you've still got the issue with the keel. Um, you've still got the issue in the fact that you'll have to clean the side of the boat afterwards because, quite frankly, um, it's um, still got muck on the side of the boat because of it. Uh, but I do think that the Hessian worked really, really well. Um, but like I say, um, we're just not trying out the grass. So you're uh, back to the tried and tested uh, method of uh, getting salty sausage out. Well, tired working lines here. Well, yeah. So what are you doing with these? This line on the side of her? It stops me floating away out the um, out to Scotland. Uh, also, as I push back away from the boat with the brush, I can only go out so far, and then it just pulls me back in again. Okay, so that's what you call your working line. Yep, keeps me close to the boat. Yeah, but uh, this is um, <laughs> our final method of cleaning our bottom, isn't it, Bev? This is the best, well, I don't know about the best way, it's certainly a fairly reliable way. Yeah. Get under it with a brush. Stuck it. <laughs> 